Hello, this is Dr. Armand. Today we're going to be looking at uh, solving a structure involving positional disorder. So two atoms that are disordered over two different positions. So we'll be using Olex uh, 2 1.3 software to show you how to go about this structure solution. So that's what we're going to be looking at uh, in this lecture. So what we're looking at is the OLEX interface. I've just opened up the INS uh, file. And so the first thing we want to do, of course, is go to the work menu, go to solve, and do an initial solve. I'll be using Shell XT, which is uh, my preferred uh, program for solving structures to get an initial model. And so here's the initial model we've solved. And as we look around, we see that <clears throat> everything looks OK, except for these two sulfur atoms, which were labeled sulfur. There should only be one sulfur. And so what this is indicating is that both of these atoms have similar electro electron density. So only one of these positions based on the model that was based on the proposed structure sulfur should only occupy one position but here it's showing that sulfur occupies two positions well obviously it can't occupy the same position so there must be some type of disorder associated with this these two positions everything else looks okay except these two positions here so I'm just going to do a quick refine. Make sure this says acta. Set this to six. And so notice that these sulfurs look a lot bigger than the neighboring carbon atoms. This may indicate that maybe this uh, position may be occupied by too much sulfur. It's too big of an atom. But one of these have to be sulfur. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change its occupancy to one half or 50%. Maybe 50% of the time is located at one position and 50% of the time is located in another position. So you can imagine if you see a a film of a crystal 50% of the time in the 50% of the unit cells it's one way 50% of the unit cells it's in the other position so it's kind of flipping back and forth between the two positions so now that I put it at 50% we're going to refine it so now that you see we've refined it to 50%. Now we see some electron density uh, showing up here. And we have a peak here. It's about 3.07, 2.6, 2.42, 2.5. 2 and so the other position is going to be occupied by the carbon. So 50% of the time it's sulfur, 50% of the time it's going to be carbon. So let's do a ellipsoid, thermal anisotropic, put ellipsoids on these atoms. Yeah. So you see here, these two electron density peaks here suggest that these could be the carbon atoms. So I'm going to label this a carbon. And label this one a carbon. Well, obviously, this carbon here should not be bound to this sulfur. And this sulfur here should not be bound to this carbon. So what we're going to do, and this is what you do is uh, for disordered positions, is we're going to select 
a carbon on one side, a sulfur on the other side, and we're going to right click and we're going to make this part one. And then we're going to select the other sulfur and carbon combination. And this is going to be part two. So now you see that only this carbon is bound to the carbon here and the sulfur. And likewise, this carbon is bound to this carbon and the sulfur. So again, this is flipping. You can could, you could imagine it flipping back and forth between the two positions. Likewise, we need to set these two carbon atoms to an occupancy of one half. And now let's hit refine. Even better, we dropped about three, four points. And you see our ellipsoids don't look that bad. Now we're going to change these to anisotropic. And there we go. Check some bond distances. That's a carbonyl. Adjust our chemical formula. Now I'm just going to go in and label the atoms. So mode, naming. So I'm only going to label one of the sulfurs right now, and I'll come back and label the other one in a second. Now we do the carbon. I'm only going to label one of the carbons right now. I'll label the other one in a little bit. Alrighty. So now for these two disordered atoms, C12 and S1, I'm going to name S1, I'm going to type name S1, S1A, and name C12, C12A. So that, that we know that those two go together. I'm going to name C20, C12B, and I'm going to name S. 001 S1B. And so now you know that C12 goes with S1B or C12B goes with S1B and that was the one we labeled part 2 so it keeps those separate in their own part or part 1 excuse me and then S1A and C12A were part 2 again those two are separate from the B. And so that's how you model the disorder. Now we're going to add some hydrogens and so when you add hydrogens, it adds the respective hydrogens on the disordered atoms correctly. So this is 50% occupied, and this one is 50% occupied. So now we're at 5.2, 19.5%. So let's take a look at our data. There are some outliers here, so these can be dropped. So these are some bad data. They don't follow the linear trend. So we go to info, let's go to reflection statistics. We go to I over Sigma resolution. We see that here we have some very weak data around after 75 degrees to theta. I'm going to omit from 55 degrees and higher. Let me update my formula. So again, to omit, you go to edit instructions, and there are many ways to omit data. This is just one way, so we go omit, negative 355. Now we go to work, refine. So we're omitting some of that data that's high angle data, weak data, not very good data. And so now we're down to 16.5%. Now with copper radiation, you don't have this problem because even with 
uh, copper radiation to high angle data is very strongly diffracting. So you don't have to omit hardly any, in my opinion. Now let's go to info. We'll go see if there's any bad reflections. So here you see that these are all above an error of 10. So we could try to edit it, but we only got two, so we can't really do much. And it's very weak. So we're going to omit these ones that are above 10. And we're going to omit these ones too that are very close to 10. So now we're going to do a work, refine. So those were very bad data. They were the ones that we saw drop from that linear plot. So now we're at 13%. We check our line, uh, our plot again. You see, those are the data that we've omitted. Some of the high angle data and some of the uh, uh, large error reflection data. Now we can address our weighting parameters. It looks good. We can do a little bit more. Hit refine again. And so this is good. Now we'll go to report. We'll use these. Let me see if I have Okay, so now I'm just going to put in some information. I don't have the sizes, but usually you'll be given the sizes. I'll just put in 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Say so this is a plate, nylon loop. Set to the fraction, this is 98.2. That's good. Merge shift, all right, refine. So down here, it says absolute structure determination because, again, we're in space group P212121. So that's a non-central symmetric space group. Our flak parameter is 004. Now, since we have sulfur and sulfur is bigger than phosphorus, we can use anomalous dispersion to determine absolute structure. So here we would select anomalous dispersion, click refine. Let me go edit SIF info, see what there's. Yeah, so it has the cell measurements, the fraction type, so we're good there. All righty. So now let's do a check SIF.
Now let's see what the check shift tells us. So we scroll down, everything looks good. There's one B error. It says number of I reserve minus I calc over sigma greater than 10. There's five outliers. So we'll show you how to fix this error. There might be a few more, um, a few more, what's it called, bad reflections we need to omit. So let's take a look at that. So let me go back to Olex. Now let's go back to info. So here we have a few more outliers. So we're going to omit those greater than 10 and also these ones very close to 10. And let's see if that remedies that issue. So that looks good. Go to work. Refine. Adjust this a little bit. The waiting parameters. Hit refine again. So everything is green. Green is good. So now we'll go back, do a check SIF report. Now let's check our check SIF report. You scroll down, now you see that uh, that B error is gone. So good job, we got that done. It has some chirality. So, Overall, not a bad uh, structure solution. So again, this is just one type of disorder that you can model. There are different types of disorder, but uh, the most common one is positional disorder where you have maybe two atoms disordered over the same position. So you need to model that. So that's what we did here. And it takes practice uh, modeling disorder. Sometimes uh, you may have where one atom is disordered over two positions. Here we had two atoms disordered over two different positions, but sometimes you may have one atom that's disordered over two positions, so you have to model that uh, disorder. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture on structural solution involving the positional disorder of two atoms disordered over two positions. So next time,